Good morning. Welcome to Daily Devotion. I'm Pastor Krieger. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. Keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. And into your hands I commend my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. Marshal Foch uh, was the commander of the Allied forces in World War I. And uh, he famously said, Battles are won the day before. And no doubt... Uh, he was referring to things like adequate preparation and training and supplies and finding finding ways to gain the tactical advantage. I wonder if that's what David had in mind, or or if that uh, that idea ever crossed his his mind uh, as he's writing the words of of Psalm twenty. Psalm twenty is a a prayer and a song meant to be sung in worship before going into battle, and it's been pointed out that if you pay attention to uh, the pronouns, uh, you can get a sense of, of how the music to the song may have been arranged. We can split it into three sections, uh, and each one describes one of the essential elements for victory as God's people fight against their enemy, uh, fight against the forces of evil. So the first section, these first five verses, the Lord is spoken of in the third person, and we are singing words of blessing to David, uh, David the king, and we're asking the Lord to make him be successful and give him victory in God's name. Uh, so uh, that those first five verses likely would have been sung by maybe a choir or the congregation. So I'll read those verses and see if you can identify uh, the first essential element for victory uh, that this psalm is, is identifying for us. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. We will shout for joy when you are victorious and will lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Uh, so, in the law of uh, in the law that was given to the Israelites, uh, we can read about this in Deuteronomy. God told them what they were to do before going out into battle. Uh, when they were would look at what they were up against and see that they were outnumbered uh, by forces that greatly exceeded their own, a priest would come out and say to the soldiers, "Don't be afraid." Don't panic because the Lord, the same Lord who rescued you from Egypt, is going into battle with you and he will give you the victory. And if you read on from those verses in Deuteronomy 20, this interesting little bit, they say if anyone is afraid, they should go home because they don't need numbers. They don't need uh, frightened soldiers in their ranks. You don't win or lose by having a greater army or a lesser army. The victory comes from trusting in the Lord. So the first essential element is just that. An army full of people who pray, uh, people who trust, people who depend on the Lord's strength, not on their own. And then the next verse, uh, beginning the next section, begins, Now I know. So it's likely that these, these next, uh, next couple of verses, verses 6 through 8, probably sung by a soloist when they were used in worship. And again, I'll read it, uh, see if you can pick out the essential element for victory. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He answers him from his holy heaven with the saving power of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. So remember back to the beginning, verse 1 of this psalm started, May the Lord answer you. And now the soloist, the leader, uh, about to go into, vict into army to, to gain the victory, says, Now I know the Lord saves. He answers. God had promised victory. And David claimed that promise by faith. 
For victory, it's essential to have a confident leader, not one confident in human strength or wisdom, but confident in the Lord, in his sure promises. And then the last verse of Psalm 20, back to the choir or the congregation. Uh, and finally, they, they are ad- these words are addressed to the Lord himself. Lord, give us, uh, Lord, give victory to the king, or, O oh Lord, save the king. Answer us when we call. The final element for, for victory is a Lord who is powerful over all, a Lord who answers prayer, a Lord who promises that we will win. Now, you've, you've likely heard me say this before, but it bears repeating because we still have the same sinful hearts and we, we still like to read in God's word promises that aren't there uh, and, and to take God's words and twist them around uh, to hear what we want to hear. This is not a promise that God is going to make, make us successful in everything that we want to do. We can't just apply this to all of our personal endeavors and goals and say like, okay, God, make me wealthy. And then I'm going to go out and start a business and just wait for the money to start pouring in. Uh, God has made a lot of promises to us, but he hasn't promised to follow our instructions as we plan out our lives. What he promises is that he'll provide for our greatest need our need to be reconciled to him, to be saved from eternal death. And he promises to bring us through this life and bring us to the end according to his wisdom and his power. So what do we need for victory? The same things that we read about in this psalm. We need to pray. We need to have a humble attitude that brings our requests to God as the only one who can save us. And then second, we need uh, confidence that he will do what is right for us according to the wisdom that we don't have but that we know he does. And this means that often the answer to our prayers is going to come in ways and at times that we wouldn't have chosen if we were in charge. And finally, just like David, we need the Lord. We need him to keep his promises. We need him to hear our prayers. We need him to take action for us. We need him to be king for us. We can plan our strategies for our lives, but it's the Lord who determines the outcome. So now I, I don't know what, what battles you're fighting today, Uh, But I've yet to meet a person who isn't struggling somewhere. Uh, And the intensity of your battles likely varies from day to day and and from year to year. But this we know. Satan's not giving up. Psalm 20 gives us the words to pray before we go into battle. And it's like we said at the beginning, battles are won the day before. So if you happen to be blessed right now with a lull, a, a calm day without any major battles going on, uh, even more reason to pray Psalm 20. Lord, give us the victory in our current battles. Lord, give us the victory in our future battles. Lord, hear our prayer and be king for us. In the name of Jesus, amen. We'll join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.